Hello everyone, this is Janos. My name is Janos Sendivarga and I am an IT engineer. I live in Budapest, just uh, Hungary, just moved back from Abu Dhabi. So I work for the company named Graph Coding. This is a <laughs> currently a one-man show, so nothing big yet. So I am proud uh, of this graph technology landscape blog post earlier this year. You can Google it. It, it was a market research about graph technologies. I liked it very much. So I've been in the Neo4j community since 2013, and I am the main organizer of the Neo4j Budapest meetup group. And you can reach me on Twitter and in email as well. So let's see. What is chaos engineering? I will talk about chaos engineering in this talk. So when I was a kid, a long, long time ago, there was no TikTok and Instagram. So I usually broke things. Uh, I try to explore my toys, uh, how my toys work. So, so my sister had a toy washing machine. I broke it. She was not happy. So I have got a train set, model train set from my parents. I broke it. They were not happy. And I had this remote controlled bus with the wired controller, I broke it. I was not happy. So <laughs> nobody was happy about that. But uh, I learned a lot about this, about electricity, mechanical engineering, communication, <laughs> and similar things. So, so at the end, I managed to fix them all and I soldered longer cable to the bus, uh, put lighting into the train, and these toys became, at the end, more reliable and more usable things. So the chaos engineering in IT does the same. Uh, it is the art of breaking things in purpose. So, in IT, we do these things because we want to minimize the downtime, the outage, the service outage. So that's why we do chaos engineering in IT. Uh, a little about uh, the history. There was this gentleman, Jesse Robbins. Uh, he's a tech entrepreneur. Uh, he founded the DevOps tool Chef and created a company to produce StarTech style communicator, this Onyx communicators. And he was an investor in Pager Duty company. So he's an interesting character. And he worked for Amazon. And his job title was Master of Disaster. So he was responsible for the website availability under the Amazon brand. And he created this game day. So uh, game day was a project to practice uh, uh, the, the failures. So purposefully injecting failures into the systems and see what hap what is happening. So basically this uh, guy was a practicing firefighter and he, he brought the concept from there into the IT. Uh, you, you can uh, mix uh, different things like engineering, psychologists and, and and all these things together, and and you can use uh, the benefits in IT as well. So, so later it was adopted 
by many organizations, uh, mainly the big ones, Google, Netflix, Facebook, Nokia, and many others. And Netflix was the one who started to promote it uh, uh, on the internet. And there are a lot of uh, articles, blog posts about how to do chaos engineering. And in 2016, this principle of chaos engineering website was created. And this is the, the manifesto of chaos engineering. And later there was a book uh, from O'Reilly publisher. So it is recommended if you are interested in this chaos engineering business. Uh, Netflix, uh, provided some tools, uh, then it's easier to start because they provided some business case as well, some uh, ROE calculations, uh, how to sell it to your managers that it works to deal with chaos engineering. And at the end, uh, it will not cost more than your failures in production. So let's see the steps. So if you do a chaos engineering experiment, you should do one experiment at a time and you should do the following steps. So you should define a steady state. This is the normal behavior of your system. So after that, you should have a control group and an experimental group and you should inject failures into the experimental group and you should try to disprove the hypothesis that uh, your system is resilient so these are the steps sounds easy but sometimes it isn't so let's see uh, execution order. This is about the thing, how to start your chaos engineering experiment. So one important thing, because when I told to my friend, uh, I want to do some chaos engineering, he asked me, is it about testing in production? So what is the difference be between testing and chaos engineering? So when we test, then uh, uh, the, we have a set of inputs and we have a set of outputs and we try to verify the behavior of the system. In chaos engineering, we, most of the times we don't know the output or the behavior of our system. Uh, that's the main uh, difference. So, so non-knowns is something like Jim Weber uh, mentioned in the keynote. It's like if you kill one node from your causal cluster, then it will still work. So this is like a non-knowns uh, category. But the others can be uh, really different. For example, if you set the uh, time of the system uh, of, on the nodes differently and things like that. If you configure the, the header size or something like that, and then you will learn a lot and you will see unexpected behaviors. So mainly the last three is the, is the scope of the chaos engineering. And the last one, the unknown unknowns are the most interesting or most dangerous ones. So, so here are the, I lost a bit, wait a sec. Yeah. So the first step, you should have uh, observability. So that means you should have metrics about uh, uh, about your systems. So the typical use cases of Neo4j uh, are those, the recommendation system, fraud detection, 
identity management, master data management. So you can define these metrics. So one metric that matters is some kind of startup word uh, phrase, but it's useful when you want to define your steady state, your normal behavior. So in a recommendation system, so for example, if your recommendation system uh, is down, for example, if you have a web shop where most of the traffic is coming from Google, then you are still fine, yeah? Your business is going. But for example, at Netflix, uh, I think more than 80, 90% of the traffic is from the recommendation system. So it can be a business critical system. So your recommendation system should be functional most of the time, so all of the time. So uh, you should define metrics you will consider uh, as a normal behavior. So yeah, fraud detection is the same. If your fraud detection system is done, maybe your business is still going, but you are lo losing a lot of money. So, so it's better to test all your systems <laughs> with this chaos engineering because uh, you want to know the weaknesses of your system. So that's the goal of the chaos engineering. So this is about defining the steady state. So in practice, how to do this with your Neo4j. So earlier this year, I was working on a blog post with my friend Biro Marci at Graphaware about how to put uh, Neo4j, Graph Prometheus and Grafana together. And, and of course you need enterprise edition, but if we are talking about a resilient high availability cluster, that's uh, a must. So, so you need uh, enterprise edition and you can publish the metrics of your Neo4j and you can define your custom metrics as well. And you can uh, display it in, in a Grafana dashboard. So, so in this blog post, we, we wrote how to do this. And this is a very good start to get observatory of your Neo4j cluster or your applications and your Neo4j together on the same dashboard. So there is a dashboard. Uh, you can download it from the Grafana website. Uh, if you search for Neo4j, you will find it and you, you can use it as a template. So the second step, breaking things. It's getting exciting. So this is just a generic list uh, what could be wrong during, uh, during your daily operation. But I think if you spend enough time in IT, then you will have ideas what could go wrong in a production system. So maybe you can simulate a uh, failure in your data center. You can switch down some Kafka topics and DNS injecting latency between services. Sometimes your timeout settings will, will cause a big trouble. So all these uh, experiments are about try to inject some failure. So this is a generic list and the most important advice is you should have a big button, a big red button always because you have to control this experiment because you should stop it at any time. For example, uh, uh, it's not so funny story, but Chernobyl in 1986 was a resiliency test. Uh, what will happen if we cut the power source of the coolant? So, 
and and we know what was the result and we we saw some background <laughs> thanks to hbo as well so but i think most of us work in less critical or dangerous environments uh, but we still still we should do it carefully and stop it if there is a big problem so the tools uh, the chaos monkey tool from netflix is an interesting one so if you have a dockerized or uh, environment then then you can use this uh, it will randomly kill some instance and you can check if your system is still uh, operational or not uh, there is this manual tool from vmware and i put some links about materials blog posts uh, books and best practices and there is this uh, chaos monkey for spring boot tool from code centric this is very useful in most of the cases uh, i saw if you have an l4g then your application most of the time is in a spring boot application sorry for the python and php php guys but but if not then you can use other tools but uh, if you have a spring boot application you can use this tool you can put into the maven and based on the uh on your code it will inject uh this assault latency exception app killer memory and you can control your chaos engineering experience and i put a link uh, here as well about uh, another conference talk how to use grafana i mentioned earlier for chaos engineering so so let's do chaos in your Neo4j environment. So your Neo4j environment, only one uh, component of your whole system. So when you monitor your environment, you should, you should consider that you should monitor your applications as well. Because if you put something in your Neo4j, maybe the result will be in, in your applications or at the end users. So you should monitor uh, carefully these things. So it's just a list of ideas what you should try when you try to break your Neo4j system. So yeah, we earlier mentioned this kill one instance from the cluster this is a typical one and for example ingestion so problems if you use the kafka connector or something similar you can try to experience what will happen if you broke the ingestion system is it a real resilient solution or not uh, the time travel uh, maybe the result of this experience is not known recently so try to forcing the system clocks clocks out of sync and see what happened and injecting injecting some latency between services you can do this uh, with the tools uh, i mentioned uh, you can have uh, a few su surprises here as well if your timeout settings are, are not well everywhere. And failure injection testing uh, is, is my favorite, randomly causing faults in your transactions or, or, or in your application. So if you use Neo4j uh, on bare metal, not in docker component docker uh, containers then you should do somehow manually you need handcrafted solutions because you can't use the chaos mink monkey or something things like that so 
for this filler injection, you can use the following things. So randomly causing faults. So I tried with APOC trigger function. It was not the best because it's hard to implement uh, exception or error, but maybe you can use for delay and, and but it was not the best. If you use the graph aware framework, then you can use this improved transaction event API. But uh, if you don't have graph aware framework, you can use the, uh, the Neo4j low level API. So you can create a unmanaged extension and you can catch all your transactions and these are about the writing transactions because uh, it is called for them. And you can use the before commit uh, method and you can inject some exception or failure in your system based on some statistics or something like that. So I will show a uh, code. I'm not sure it is fully viewable. So this is a transaction uh, event, event handler class. You should register it as an unmanaged extension and then you can use it. And in the before commit method, you can, uh, you can throw exceptions based on your settings. So this was my experiment uh, to inject fault into the systems. And after that, you can see what happens in your application. Do you have some uh, exception throwing strategy or retry mechanism and things like that? And you can get interesting results. So this is one way I use. And uh, one best practice here is to use metric registry. So you can uh, increase your uh, exception counter. So the injected exceptions, then you can see them on the graph on the dashboard and, and you can stop it as well. Uh, so maybe I will open source my code in the coming weeks and, and you can play with it uh, a bit more. So this is the dashboard I created. Uh, I, I got some idea from, from the blog post and Spring Boot uh, Chaos Monkey tool and created a dashboard. And I was able to start a, a Chaos Monkey experiments. Uh, one at a time uh, with simple steps. And I was able to monitor the number of failures, the uh, the status of my cluster and things like that. So, so today uh, in the keynote, we heard from Emil Ephraim that uh, how much effort was put into the resiliency of the Neo4j. So <laughs> I think it's time to play with it and, and try to break it and learn from it. So that's all I wanted to share with you.